G'day everyone, welcome to the Open Wheels channel. And massive appreciation to everyone who's subscribed. Um, I seem to have tripled my subscriptions in the last, say, month, um, which is quite encouraging. Um, I think I'll have to start showing my appreciation or something. I was gonna do something when my website opens up. Um, but I might get to 100 before then and have to do something. I'll have to see what happens. Um, my shop that I'm opening up online, um, I'm not actually trying to, gonna try to make sales as such. I'm not gonna be offering percentages off and trying to convince you into buying it. I think Opal should sell itself. So I'm gonna have reasonable prices, I hope, um, with some wiggle room, we'll see what happens. Um, but I'm not trying to make top dollar off this. I'm just sharing what I do, some of what I do. Um, so, for instance, this video, uh, bought a parcel. Last time I was in Andamooka. Um, that video seems to have gotten quite a great response. Um, I you remember this stone I got on that trip and I paid around the thousand for it. I'll let you in on. So, what I'm gonna do this video is just make a start on some little bits and um, see what they come up like. I've got some high hopes for them. Um, and yeah, just making a start on that parcel, which I shouldn't be doing because I've got a lot of other things I should be <laughs> cutting chronologically first. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just do these for now. Um, also, I'd like to sort of keep this somewhat informative. Um, the, the how I know what I know or think I know what I know. Um, and to get you on the same page as me, as far as what I'm doing. Um, and how I understand things. So, uh, for I'm in South Australia, um, in Adelaide, and I'm sure most of Australia is aware of this. Um, 1965, I think roughly, um, we had a show start up called Humphrey B. Bear. Now, that show ran for about seven years before it decided it should maybe be a bit more scientifically educational for the kids. And so, in 1972, um, I think the show sort of got a spin-off of its own, but it was called The Curiosity Show. Uh, it was uh, two hosts, Rob and Dean, they were pretty scientific type guys, uh, explaining all that sort of stuff for kids. Now, that ran from 1972 to 1990. Um, a lot of younger generation would uh, sorry, older generation would remember this quite vividly. Um, I think they've got a lot of their stuff online, which is where I'm going to share a link to what I'm mentioning this all for. They went to Cooper Pedy and they did this awesome uh, little doco, um, not too long, uh, explaining how the formation, not so much of Opal as such, as well as that, but how the land had moved and shifted and how Australia formed, um, hence the inland sea that we seek the shoreline of for this stuff. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the link. I won't say too much about it. It's one of those things that, yep, if you're interested in Oval, you will wanna hear what they have to say and take away from it what you will. So anyway, I'll put that in the link and go and watch it now if you wanna pause this or I'm gonna keep going on with this, so I'm going to start weighing them just because I've got them dry, just to see what the start is. Um, scale all these out. I'll just go for the total. So at 9.3 grams, which is about 46.7 carat, so 46 carat. Um, I think that's right. Yep. So 46 carat. Uh, we'll see what I end up with at the end. Um, I'm expecting maybe a carat there. Um, two to three carat there. So it'd be four carat. And maybe uh, uh, there'll be a lot of waste on this one. So that'll definitely be half its weight, which would be 20 carats. Um, I'd say 15 by done. So if I get 
roughly 16 to 18 carats out of all this. That'd be a, a massive bonus, but it could get down to 10 carats. Um, but even at 10, 20 bucks a carat, that'll definitely be a start on making the money back. So I'm gonna quickly now wet them. So I don't need them to dry anymore. Just give you a better look at them. So some awesome color in these. Um, it's definitely matrix, as you can tell. This one's on a bit of an angle. So the stone's gonna mainly come from in this section here. I just gotta get it to face right. So something like that. So I'll have to change the angle of the face from that to about that to get that. And this is half the, uh, the study of opal pieces that you're about to cut and just moving them around, looking, 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 all different angles and which way do you think the top should be? And does the stone allow to be cut that way size wise? Like, is there enough of it? Will you end up with something or just cut that face and then, oops, it's at the bottom. Um, so there's a lot of decision making on some opal. It's not always straightforward bars. Um, and even then, you'll notice some bars as they face, say that way, they don't quite face as much that way. And you get more blue to a green shift. Um, and you can get different combinations of shifts of colors of the way it will display the color. And that's all to do with, um, yeah, just the way photons are absorbed and um, sent on their way and in which direction and what frequency. And that's where you get the display of colors. Um, diffraction and refraction reflection so anyway um awesome color in these that one i think it's pretty much up that way once cut uh, sort of got a better angle that way but i'm not sure if it's thick enough to cut a stone sideways so i have to turn it this way slightly uh, once i take all this off i'll see what's actually under here and who knows it might just be a lot a little stone at the end that's in there and uh, this was one of the chips that um, well, all these are chips that came off the main stone, um, but this one caught my eye with just the nice flashes that are in it. Bit of an orange there, and greens, and a bit of light blue. I love that blue, but that will go because that's way too thin to stay. So this stone's going to get reduced right down to something around there. Um, hence, I think only about one carat will come of it, but it should be a nice carrot. So anyway, I'll um, start heading over to the wheel and just start touching all these up, cleaning them up a bit, get them ready to dot or maybe slice on the wheel. I'm not sure if it's worth keeping all that. Let's see what happens under there, but I think it's a bit mixed up and just a very thin shell layer through there. Um, yeah, I might keep it for a chip even. Yeah, yeah why not? So I'll slice that up and start getting onto the wheel. I'll go do this slicing first and then, yeah, straight over to the wheel. That's where I'll cut in again. See you in a sec. All right, so this one got sliced and I'm pretty sure I might get a little stain out of this side now because it was thick enough, but I'm just not sure how sort of thick it stays through to that end. I might get a little stain out though. That'd be cool. But there's that main one from that side. So I'm just going to clean the backs up and the edges, get all the yucky stuff off these. And yeah, see what surprises they hold. So on with the machine. <laughs> we'll start off with the small one first, see what actually comes out.
Pause and put my water on a little bit more. Just hang on a sec. Straight back into it. I'll take the bottom off this one first. Then this side. I hope I'm speaking loud enough, sorry about that. Um, even with that static mic, it's um, the machine, I'm not sure if I'm able to get over the top of. So I'll sort of yell at you. <laughs> um, so on with this one, just gonna have to take all these off on the edges, the very thin parts, they're just no good. So we're gonna get the back here. Um, don't think that'll be a good enough face. It'll be a nice face there anyway, and that's the color I wanted to go for. Rip the band-aid off. The most nerve-wracking part about cutting opal is you look at it beforehand and go, wow, it looks great. And then you're like, well, what am I gonna do to it? Is it gonna look better? Am I better off leaving it? So when you get a bit more experience and go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do this, that, and the other with it. So I'm pretty sure I can do something with that. Now, I'm just gonna take off this little crust off the back. Um, and you just get into it. Just go, don't think about what it was. Think about what you want it to be and do that. It's a 150 wheel. I don't have to be 150ing it this whole time. Um, that's why I'm just getting it down. Uh, I'll give it a bit more of a shape on the next wheel and then dot them. But at the moment, it's just reveal. So, so yeah, you get on with the back. Wow. I said the back won't be the price, but Wow, we'll uh, get a bit of a rise over the face there already. I might have to go for both sides on this. I like that orange. Only it came through this side. Of so anyway, <laughs> another problem I like to have. Um, lucky last. This one's the one I had. Really good hopes for. I just hope this really cleans up around here really quickly. Otherwise, I'm left with virtually nothing. Ooh. So it's just 
poke through there really brightly. Just round it around there. That's where this will go. touch the opal that I can see, I want to touch what I can't see and see if any of this goes down further and pops out and then you know it's a thin crust on it rather than all the way through. But this looks like it goes all the way through, so that's okay. At least I know. around the sides like this you start to gauge how thick your stone will be so it's just under there and it's still got a bit of depth here and definitely depth there Here's where you could go, all right, look, I just want to stop there. I'll leave that stuff on the bottom. I'll cut the stone on the top and I'll hide the bottom, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's a doable thing, but a little bit of sort of experience, some bit of knowledge, you can go, all right, see that corner there? There's potch, there's no color. Blocking color, if you want. And so I'm gonna get rid of that, which brings that in there. That there is thick enough to leave and dome over, so I can take this off the bottom all the way down to there and still have a stone that will face sort of like that.
corner. So I'm quite happy with the results of that. They're all rather clean as far as cracks. Uh, this one I could almost take down from this side. Could, won't. Um, I'll tidy them up again on the next wheel. And uh, yeah, well, you know, decisions change. So if I take this top off and if it gets brighter, it gets brighter, or if it stays like that, and this looks better, as it sort of does there. We'll, yeah, decide about it then. It's a beautiful colour, but I'd like this orange to come out. Hopefully it comes through after I take the top off of you. So I'm going to change pads. Oops. As easy as that. Done. Changed. Same machine. It's not a big, long machine. These are quite handy. Um, I like the flat face I can get from it for the backs. So it sits flat and I can T shape it onto my stick very level. And then it's just so easy to cut. Um, I'm gonna stop rambling now and just probably fast forward some of this if you want to see it, you wanna see it. Otherwise skip to the end and I'll show you the results and weigh them. So I'll fast forward. Bad result. This one is going to be matrixy all the way through. All that sandy stuff. So I might just cut this side. It's got a nice rise on it already. It's got sort of a nice colour, but it's hoping to get that orange out of there. Might come through the other side instead. So I'll keep that as the flat side just because the retention of shape might still give it a nice. Sort of dome in there somewhere, uh, oval. And that was the first one I little cleaned up just a minute ago. That'll be the bottom, still tidy it up a bit, but that'll be the little chip bit. Yeah, it's all right, it helps. And give it the face, there we go. A bit directional for that nice orange. Flash. That does have colour most places. So not a bad flash on the back as well. I was thinking about facing it that way, but no, I'll just bring the sides in a touch more and dome this side. It's got enough body. And this one I was thinking about facing that way. Just because it came cleaner. I thought oh, I'll risk going down because I really like that colour there <laughs> um, and would like to keep it. So it came right down this side a bit. So by the time this rolls over and blends in, bring that in a touch to get rid of that knife edge. Um, that'll be a nice little teardrop shape. Beautiful colour. So great little result out of some chips. I'll get two. Stick these on dots. This one will probably be a double faced anyway. 
just because of its shape. I don't want to, it's a bit twisted, so if you look at it that way, it's going to be a little bit down this side, but still curves from this corner down to that corner. That way. So anyway, we'll see what I can do about neatening that up and try and display that side as well. Matching bit off on it. Maybe make some earrings. Looks like it could be reversible. But anyway, I'll go get these dopped and get on with it. Sometimes you just got that feeling you're being watched. Look at that cute little guy. Look at the eyes. That little jumping spider. And back up. Funny little fella. And he just tried to jump the camera. Always something watching you here in Australia anyway. <laughs> Alright, all done. Here's the results. They trimmed up quite nicely. That's the one with a bit of goldie in the bottom. Still a bit on the edge there. Didn't quite come through, but this will be the face anyway on this one. Nice flash up there and a bit of a rolling flash down the bottom there. And this one will be double sided. And I'll be definitely treating all this. Um, it's the, yeah, hopefully the matrix is poor enough, porous enough, uh, and will absorb. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will. Um, that was the little one. Oops, upside down. That'll be the face there. A couple of nice little flashes around it, but very directional. It's only a little chip anyway. And um, here's what it is. And this one. Nice flashes of colour around in it. And again, I'm hoping this will treat well. And that will stand out a lot more. That's that. So I polished them all up, all the way around. Um, won't have to seal them up with any um, resins or anything like that, which I'd never do anyway. Um, the only thing I'd do is um, treat them. And that's only when I got the matrix. I never used to deal with Matrix before, just over a year ago. Um, I just wasn't into it, but I've since found a fascination for the stuff and understand it a bit better. Um, so I'm playing around with it and figuring out which one does what. So hoping these will treat. And um, I wanna yeah, jump over onto the scars for a sec. Bear with, zoom back out. Okay, so that probably won't be anywhere near what I said. Okay, eight, eight point three carats. Let's say eight carats. So yeah, it's two carats under the ten, which I said was my label guess. I said about fifteen. Yeah, way off half that. So yeah, well, it's from chips. The decent little stones in the end, and um. Just the bonus bits, I suppose. I can't wait to cut the big piece, but I've got a few other things I better get to first. And um, yeah, again, excuse my terminology. Um, I said earlier, I'll put the put it in the link. I mean, I'll put the link in my description of, for this video for the Curiosity Show um, info. Um, I know I'm providing information from other people. Um, but this is where I've gotten my information from, so I think you're better to hear it from the people I hear it from rather than me. I'm trying to verbatim repeat them and mess something up. I'll uh, let you hunt that down yourself if you're interested enough. You'll definitely do it. Um, and yeah, it's just just more about Australia and Australian opal formation of the land, how it came to be. I know a lot of people have seen a lot of different versions of probably what you we'll find in here but this is one of the best with the diagrams and so forth of showing the inland sea and the way it happened more than once um, which also explains some things more so finding out that there is a volcanic uh, opal 
which is slightly different. Obviously it's opal silica, but a different formation. That one was formed in heat, from what I understand. So, wouldn't mind having a suss of that one day. I think it was Tintin Bar mine, somewhere like that. New South Wales anyway. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed. It's just a quick cut, a bit of info. And yeah, if you're interested, you'll definitely look out for that link. Um, I'll make sure to put it in the description. Yes, I got it right that time. All right, <laughs> so I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.